This is your girl, Karina Dean, and I am here presenting to you Decoding More Room Magic in Beyonce's Lemonade. And we are really going to dive deep into the symbolism of this art form. Now, Beyonce is a very special entertainer and has had decades of influence and a strong power of influence. So what we are really going to take into consideration is the platforms that she is using. We're going to look at the timing that it occurs when she drops it. We're also going to decode through numerology and astrology the energies of this happening for us at the time that it's happening. And then we're going to put together some patterns of images that we are going to see uh, come up within the within the video. So as Lemonade begins, we are looking at Beyonce in her chinchilla coat right and we also hear the sounds of water it sounds like bubbling water she says the past and the future merge to meet us here what luck what a fucking curse and what i'd like to show you is how the past and the future do bring us to the present with this visual album and the chinchilla coat is essential to beyonce's career when we first see Beyonce rock a chinchilla coat, it's actually way back when she does Crazy in Love and she's with Jay and she comes out after the car blows up under the bridge. And this is very significant. The chinchilla coat here uh, represents her going through a transformation even at that time, beginning the full blown career as her as a solo artist. The B-Day album, uh, she'll be rocking chinchilla coats if I let you go. So in the B-Day album, we're already introduced to the concept that um, there is some sort of uh, uh, tension going on and she is already feeling like her chinchilla coat is going to be taken away. It's just a small hint to maybe infidelity or maybe something else, but she uses it very often. We also see Beyonce in chinchilla coats all the time. So I feel like it's really significant. And I really know it is because she starts off the entire visual album with her in it. And what it tells me is that um, the past and the future have merged and she's now at a different place now. So the chinchilla, what I see represents, you know, even in its most physical, most literal form, it represents status, you know. It's all about what the status is. Beyonce is explaining to her fans what status means to her, and the chinchilla is just a representation of that. The chinchilla animal is um, a very, very, very precious animal because its fur is one of the softest that you could get, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and you know, it's a crime to actually go and be skinning these animals and shit like that. So it's very, very rare. That's what makes it very, very expensive. So, you know, especially in hip-hop culture, niggas wouldn't know anything about a chinchilla if it wasn't for rappers and people like Beyonce and whatnot. You know, so the fact that she came out with the chinchilla, it was it was saying what her status was then. And um, a ve another very great point is, um, you know, and as it further along in her career, you get to B Day and she's talking about the chinchilla. It's about her losing her status. You know, that was a story about her losing her status. You know, as the Queen Bay at that time. And now you take it to this point in time where you see, like you said, she's, she ain't with Jay necessarily in the imagery. You know what I'm saying? She's by herself and um, she's got a whole new demeanor. Formation and Lemonade are directly connected. And they're telling a story here that is very, very um, interrelated. And we see the image of Beyonce in formation surrounded by certain uh, people and entities. She's just protected 
by different beings now as we look at her in Lemonade. So the concept of the past and the future bring us here. She's showing us also that um, something has happened, some sort of death of some sort that has brought her to be surrounded by different people and different entities. And why? Well, maybe it is this um, relationship and the feelings and the states of emotions that she has um, had to go through. She's now at a different place in her career, right? So we're reminded of when she was first in her career and where she is now. And she's about to show us. She's about to show us now who she is and what she is and what she's all about. In this chart, um, not using whole signs, but using the house cusp, her, her son is in the 11th house, the 11th house of, um, you know, the, reaching the masses. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with Jupiter right on the sun right now, I mean, she picked an appropriate time. Beyonce must have an astrologer behind her, helping her to make some career moves, because right now seems to be a decent time to come out with a new project. Um, you know, because I do see the Jupiter on her son in Virgo and the North Node there, too. So that's a good way to reach the masses with Jupiter there and, and in a positive way. And then um, you've got Venus, uh, which is her chart ruler because she's a Libra ascendant in this chart, in conjunction with Uranus, um, which brings about like sudden, you know, sudden things. It could be sudden inspiration, coming up with sudden something very sudden. And also Uranus all, uh, rules the masses as well. So... And Venus is very positive energy. So, yeah, she's got, um, she's got some great energy going on in the sun in her seventh house of, you know, the approval of the populace. So um, she really has some great transits going on to help her to have a great positive response to what project she is putting out there. Um, I definitely do see that. It, it can be a little bit of hard work because of, you know, Saturn in her second house, but I think it will definitely um, have a great response and benefit her in some sort of way. As far as her transits go, I was, I was tracking her, her like Jupiter, her Jupiter and her Saturn, um, what they've been doing over the like the last couple years because they they move a bit slower, and I think I think they're both like all right. So um, within the last five years, she's had Saturn transit through. She's had a a Saturn return. And I definitely saw the change, the change in her, the sexual persona. She opened up the 12th house a bit, which is, you know, heavy, and, and, and really, uh, you know, tapped into her, her sexual side and, and put that into her career a lot. So I think, you know, Saturn may have activated another side of her. And um, Jupiter-wise, she's winning. <laughs> she's been winning for, for a long time, but, like, you know, she's coming off in, uh, a 10th house to 11th house uh, transit, and, it, and it's been really good. Like, in what you said, uh, uh, Karina, before, with it going over her son, um, I think it's, re it, for me, it's really showing how much power this woman, this woman has. So Beyonce drops her visual album Lemonade on Saturday, April the 23rd. And this has a lot to do with the number nine. Here's how it goes. April is a four month. The 23rd is broken down in numerology to five. So four plus five breaks down even more to nine. And this brings us the energy of Mars. Then we have 2016. 2016 is broken down as well into 9. 20 plus 16, which is 7 plus 2, and then that comes to 9. So we have a double 9, which is a master number as well. And then 9, whenever it is reduced, it, it only reflects itself. So 9 plus 9 comes to 18, which then is reduced to 9. So it's really important to see that this date is about the concept of ending a cycle, 
the number the number system is typically uh, using zero to nine and pretty much every compound number is made out of these numbers right so nine is the concept that we are at the end and then we have to start again from one and then that means the new canvas the new beginnings so when we look at the time that lemonade is dropped it is dropped on the Scorpio full moon and that as well has a lot to do with the concepts of transformation because Scorpio rules over sexuality it rules over the concepts of death as well as rebirth when you think about death to rebirth it is a alchemical process right so we're looking at transformation or shedding of skin and um, Scorpio is also a water sign, but it is ruled by Mars, so it has this concept of fire and water as well. And uh, very often in our images of society, we see fire and water, or the concept of blue and red as well, being used throughout in patterns of media images. And so what I'd like to present to you today is the, the concept of decoding is important because we as humans operate through the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And through images, the subconscious mind actually takes in a lot more memory than uh, we are conscious of. And when we use music to, to moving images, we are now being influenced in an even more powerful way. And there are concepts that we are taking in even without our knowing. So it's important to decode because you are filtering through the process and really making uh, stronger decisions for, for yourself, whether you want to agree with what it is that you're taking in. As we look at Beyonce's chart, we also have to take in consideration that she typically has many planets in, Ven uh, in Venus ruled spaces of the sky. So um, Beyonce has a common denominator of having planets in Libra. And so what we find with that, as well with her, her son in Virgo, is that Beyonce is really capable of appealing to women and we see that very much so because of her ability to have the message to women in her music throughout her career um, she has really taken on this persona of being the voice of women and women who women who are um, highly influenced by Libra in their charts as well as by Virgo I really do feel like they have a special connection to Beyonce because they feel that em empathy that Venus has, the concepts of justice that Venus has as well. So we're looking at a real igniting of the feminine spirit. And when we think about the rise of the divine feminine, we're really seeing this um, manifest in a way. Uh, through this entity that is Beyonce and through her influence, her power of influence. Um, she says in um, a song, uh, Girls Run the World, right? That song is, Girls Run the World is like the female anthem. And she says in that song, um, my, my persuasion can heal a nation, I believe, or rule a nation. So even she understands that her power of influence over women is very much so prominent in her chart and in her work. Look at the role that Venus plays. And we'll come back to this because Venus uh, works its way through the numerology as well um, as we enroll and develop into the layers, the multi-layers of Beyonce's work, Lemonade. Okay, so now we're going to look at lemonade, and we're going to dissect this in different ways. 
Now, when you look at the word lemonade, there is an art to actually pulling out micro words out of one, the one term. And this actually is a practice that uh, relates to the concept that all languages, right, are kind of connected, basically. And um, specifically the English language, it's almost like a code, an accumulation, a melting pot of several ancient languages. Whenever we break down lemonade or any English language, um, any English term, we can see different words within them. And they actually hint to the origins of the word, they hint to the messagings of the word. And so I'm just going to present to you right here some work that I've done with some of my, my Facebook friends. And we went ahead and did a little warm up and broke down lemonade and we look at different concepts of what is coming out of this word. It's really cool because what we seem, what we tend to find is that um, all of our words in the language are interconnected and they all have double meanings and relations to each other. And then the reason that numerology works so well is because numerology brings the vibration, it measures the vibration of the letters and vowels together. And so that really digs us down into the origins of words because the origins of words are connected to numbers. And that's how we're really able to measure the vibration of a word. Also, what is important to look at and what is also a very great resource is the dictionary. The dictionary tells the truth about what the word definition is for us. The etymology dictionary brings us to the origins of the word. So what we find when we look at lemonade is looking at the origins, we can also tap into the intentions possibly behind what the messaging, the inner messaging is about this concept of lemonade. Now, the simple and most basic concept of lemonade is that you turn lemons into lemonade in which you take something sour, something that is bitter, and you uh, create a concoction and then it becomes sweet. And so that alone, turning lemons into lemonade, is really like the concepts of alchemy. It's the concept of a transformation to uh, take something that is bitter, add elements to it, and then it comes out different. Early in Beyonce's career, she revealed through the media that she was on a cleanse. She was on a lemonade cleanse. And it was also a concoction of cayenne pepper as well. And it was a it was in relation, I believe, to Dream Girls or her in her preparation for Dream Girls. So what we find with the lemonade cleanse is this concept of purity, of depriving the body of certain foods and a certain a regimen in order to cleanse the body. When we look at the etymology of lemon, lemonade, uh, we break it down into lemon and aid, right? And so um, lemon is actually, dates back to the 1600s of Old French, and it's used as limon. And of course, that just referred to a citrus fruit. Um, aid, which can also be uh, heard as well as A-I-D, or spelled as well as A-I-D or A-D-E, they're both similar in the concepts that they are word, they are a word forming element, denoting an action or a product of an action, forming. So the noun or suffix is also a person's or group's participating in action. So like when they come to your aid. So um, with lemonade, we're looking at the concepts of needing help, of seeking help. What we also look at with lemon is a early 20th century slang word. And so lemon was used very much to, dis to describe something that was worthless. Um, and it came from a criminal slang of a person who's a loser, a simpleton. And it's from the notion that when someone, someone can get sharper by sucking the juice out of this worthless thing. So the concept of lemon is also a slang word that is the idea of sucking the juice out. And when you suck the juice out, you get stronger, you get sharper. 
if we dig even deeper, we'll actually find that lemonade is also a slang word used in the 1960s. And it has to do with the lemon pharmaceutical company that manufactured a drug known as methaqualone or uh, commonly used as a quaalude. So lemons are directly related to quaaludes. And this is a sleep inducing drug. Now, um, the quaalude uh, attacks the central nervous system. It's a depressant and it brings down the nervous system and it acts as a sedative as well as a hypnotic. And the concepts of hypnosis um, are often used with, with this drug because of its ability to uh, bring the person into a trance, into a certain state, right? So when we think about quaaludes, this is actually uh, in connection now, we're making our first image pattern connection to the quaaludes that we thought about with Cosby and how that came up in controversy of quaaludes. So we're seeing here a subconscious connection here to the idea of lemon. So um, the methaqualone was originally uh, made, so they say, to create, to help fight malaria and it became popular for recreational use in the 1960s and 70s in the disco halls. And um, back then it was also known as disco biscuits or juice bars. The methaqualone was manufactured under Quaalude by a pharmaceutical firm named Roarer and Lemon, spelled L-E-M-M-O-N, and with the numbers 714 stamped on the tablet. So, for this reason, people uh, referred to quaaludes as lemons due to the name of the founder on the firm. Um, they also referred to it as 714s as well, um, or lemon sevens. So that is really interesting because when we think about the lemon now, it also is in relation to the concepts of an induced state of sleep. So why is this important? Why is it important to dig this deep into these concepts? I'll tell you right quick. When you think about the fact that there are millions of people watching these art forms on TV and um, platforms like HBO, uh, we are witnessing a massive ritual. We're witnessing a collective response to watching the art form and then the collective response to reacting. And this is actually a vibration that we can measure. We can take a look at the art form and dissect it in order to understand the vibration that it is omitting onto the collective.